What's up, people? Can you hear me? Let's see, oh, we got people on the call. It's always exciting. Okay, does anybody hear me? Can you hear me? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Okay, well, um, oh, thanks, Trisha. Appreciate that. So you can hear me and we got some people on and we everybody knows that I like starting things on time. So we're just going to jump right in. Um, so a couple of things that I like to just get it off the table to begin with. Um, whenever I do these presentations, people are always like, oh, what do I do with that information? So this is going to be a little bit of a sales pitch for my detox your file box class. And uh, if you want to just not bother listening to all of the things I'm going to tell you about the class and you just want to join the class directly, you can. You can go to organizingmaniacs.com slash detox your file box and you can purchase the class. I'm going to be selling the class at $100 off today. So the discount code for that is BF for like best friend uh, in today's date, which is February. So it's 0225. 2019 and then you can just you know instead of listening to me talk about all these tips that I'm actually going to expand on in the class you can just spend this hour actually learning something so um, that's one thing the number two thing is uh, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips and some of it you know people are really good at just going um, going home and implementing those things by themselves I love you, you're my people. And some of you are gonna be like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. So don't be overwhelmed, right? I'm never here to overwhelm you. I'm here to just kind of like explore the possibilities what you don't know uh, so I can help you actually get this stuff accomplished. So, and third thing is like this morning, it's been a busy day. <laughs> I've been up since like 5 a.m. Uh, I went to see a client and uh, I see her once a year. Uh, however, she was my client probably like seven or eight years ago. And I went over there because they literally had paperwork everywhere in their home. And I spent several months with her and her husband sorting and organizing all of her paperwork. And now I go once a year. And it was really validating for me that I was over there for like two hours. And in two hours, once a year, we like revamp her system and we get it organized. And she always says to me, I'm so glad we spent all of that time over, you know, several years ago, just trying to get all of this paperwork organized because now I know how to, I know where to put the stuff. I know what to do with it. So I thought it was like the universe telling me like, Hey, you know, um, I feel like I'm doing a good thing. So uh, a couple more housekeepings. Uh, there is two boxes. And if you're watching this on your home, home computer, there are two, tabs on the bottom. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. Uh, you most likely have the default to chat to everybody, so you can ask questions over there, but people are going to see that. The Q&A only comes to me, so if you have something private you want to, you know, you want to ask or whatever. Uh, I am going to save all of the questions until the very end, so that way we can uh, be fair to everybody that has short time to be on this uh, on this training um, and I'm gonna answer all the questions so don't worry once again this is being recorded we should make sure that's being recorded so you'll get the recording so if you miss something it'll still be there but if you have a question you want to ask before you have to go somewhere just do that um, uh, I guess in my last housekeeping is like you took the time to be here I took the time to be here. I did my hair, my red lipstick on. So um, maybe you want to minimize some distraction and just kind of like stay focused and see if you can learn something because I attend, <laughs> I'm a webinar junkie and I probably attend a couple a week and I always, in the beginning I would say like, oh, I'll just watch the recording later and then I'll just get the real tips, I'll write them down and then I'll implement them later. And at one point I had all of these things in my inbox that never got listened to. So I know you, you're like me. So make the time now, you're here, I'm here, let's do this. So I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, it's limited screen sharing, because who needs to see all my junk? So let's start this thing, let's see if I can. Um, Okie dokie. 
So I'm going to talk. I'm going I'm to talk about my paper management program, which I always say, if a, if there was an award for them uh, for such a thing, I probably feel like I'd be winning one, uh, just because over the years I've I've just spent so much time in people's offices and I've seen so much paperwork and nobody knew what to do with it. So I'm going to walk you through the process that. Um, you know, that I normally take clients to. Now, an average office for me takes about four appointments, so four four-hour appointments. And I don't like lying to people, so it's an average, right? Some people, um, I will work with them for like several months, and some people I'll work with them in four hours. And so I don't know how much paperwork you have, kind of have to gauge for it. But we're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about filing in a different way that you probably have never heard before. I think I haven't created an A through Z filing system um, in probably 10 years because I, I feel like that is such a waste of people's time. I love organizing and I hate filing. And if I had all the time in the world, I would never be filing. That would be like the very last thing on my list of things to do. I am not a paper lover. I move that stuff in and out of my office. So over the years, I just kind of like, you know, I've kind of came to understand what paperwork is and what is it good for and how long to keep it. And so that's basically what we're gonna talk about today. So this thing, see, this thing doesn't wanna work. That's not good. So we'll just do it that way. So I believe that paperwork can be simple. I also believe that you don't have to live in clutter and I believe that everyone can be organized. I know. Uh, so we talked about turning off your phones. Um, sometimes I forget to introduce myself because I assume everybody knows who I am, but that's not the truth. So I'm Chris Scrott and I started organizing Maniacs in 2007. And over the last 12 years, um, I have, um, I have grown a business and I have acquired some fun maniacs that work with me. I'm extremely lucky to, uh, you know, have turned my uh, obsessive compulsiveness into a business. And then I have found other people that were just as obsessive compulsive as me uh, to work with us. Um, we, you know, we specialize in working clients with brain-based challenges and that was something that also happened to me. So the majority of our clients have ADD, ADHD, um, hoarding tendencies and OCD. So we tend to work with people that are not disorganized because they want to, they're disorganized because that kind of happens to them. And we bring those uh, tips and tools and the ways that we, we have learned to work with those clients. They're really challenging basically to all of our clients because once again, like I said, I am organized. Um, so, okay, sorry, that was a question here. The video is over top of the slides. Which video are you talking about, mine? Does that help if I move it around? Yeah, does, does that help? You may, have, you may have an option to move your own video around. It's kind of an important question, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna assume it's good to go. So, um, I forgot what I was talking about. Anyway, so we bring those tips, um, we bring those simplified tips to basically all of our clients because who likes, who likes to spend time filing? No one. I have never met anybody that says like, oh my God, I love filing. It's my favorite thing. Can I spend more time doing it? Uh, so we are, we're just always thinking differently than we do and we assume that nobody likes to get organized and we don't organize people like we would for ourselves. So that's one thing that makes us a little bit different than the majority of the organizing people out there that we try to like bring strategies to people that are really geared towards our clients, not to how we are. So that's how paper kind of is for me as well. Um, okay, now I have to move this thing because I can't see. Hopefully, hopefully you're good to go, Cindy. So an average American probably receives about 14 pieces of mail every day. And this is not scientific. I just kind of like gauged and asked my friends. 
uh, which is mostly there's a lot of bill and a lot of junk mail. And if you keep track, you probably uh, receive them all the same. Um, most of my clients have paperwork pretty much everywhere. So um, I like to help people basically stop shoving their paperwork in places, right? Because it's not helpful to you. It's not helpful to your paperwork. It's not helpful to your sanity to just, I mean, sometimes I work with people and it's literally is shoved in every nook and cranny of their home. Uh, there's, there's paperwork. I used to work with a client. She used to call herself the bag lady, uh, just based on the fact that she shoved the paperwork in bags and just stuffed it in places. So the, the truth is, is that, um, you know, people are always asking me, like, why can't I find my bills? Why can't I find my permission slips? And that's because you don't have a place for it. You're just putting it in piles and you're just saying, I'll put it here for now. Uh, because this pile is important today, but tomorrow other things come on top of it. And before you know it, all the piles become just, I'll put it here for now and nothing is really safe anymore. So um, one other reason why I think a lot of people keep a lot of paperwork is because you can't, we can't make decisions about what we're keeping, why we're keeping it, how we're keeping it, what is the value of it. And uh, I hear people say this all the time, like, I don't know what to do with that, so I'll just keep it. Um, so I also work with a lot of people that have abandoned their office. I mean, their office has become just a place to collect junk, uh, or a lot of paperwork or a lot of stuff, but they're not working from, from their offices. People are working from their kitchens, from their dining rooms, from, you know, their bedroom, but they're not working from their office anymore just because that specific place is no longer manageable. So I like to help people get back to working in their office, which is the reason why they were, you know, they were intended for. And uh, in the class that we teach Detox Your File Box is basically to help you get to that place where you can actually see your space again and not just be from um, working from all over your home. Uh, this training is for people that are basically uh, have a lot of paperwork and they're just have no idea what to do with it. If you are one of those people that have like extreme filing systems and it works for you, um, you may learn something new, but th this is not, <laughs> this is not the class for you. This is the class for people that are basically completely overwhelmed and they don't have no idea what to do with their stuff. I work with a lot of people, they're embarrassed, you know, they're just, tired of like shoving things in places every time somebody wants to come over they're like you know literally scooping their you know their countertops into into something a box and then just putting it somewhere and um and, and really the ultimate goal here is just to teach people how to do a super simple filing system that you know even your 10 year old can do it so today we're going to talk about the seven steps that I basically take people through to create filing systems. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of mistakes that I see people making that even if you just did nothing else, but went implemented through, you know, those three things, I will probably help your filing system like today. So over the last 12 years, um, I've just seen a lot of people, um, you know, people used to ask me, like, how do I work with you uh, without actually having you come to my home? Because sometimes I get calls from people all over the country. They're like, oh, my friend in Washington, D.C. said you have a great filing system. Could you help me? And I was like, no, I just really only work with people hands on. I go into their office. I do the thing for them. And then I leave. And, uh, and for years, I really wanted to do something different. But I was like, I just don't have enough time. You know, I would work six days a week and sometimes seven uh, running a business and seeing clients and then I think about it was about three years ago I was like I should just create some sort of a class that people can you know uh, self 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 serve so that's where this class came from and in in, in true you know entrepreneurship and creating a product this particular class has been through like three main iterations and I have improved on the class over the last couple of years and I'm very thankful that you know, some of my clients were like, oh, my God, you have a class. I'll totally take it. I don't care where it is. And then they gave me amazing feedback about, you know, because teaching people 101 is different than actually teaching them virtually. So I'm still improving on the class. So, um, you know, every time I teach this class or that I offer it to people, somebody gives me good, good feedback on how to improve it. And I don't have ADD myself. So, you know, um, I do my very best to give all my tips geared that way. But sometimes, you know, like my natural 
brain always comes into uh, into play. So I'm going to share some of these uh, these things with you. And once again, full disclosure, I'm going to tell you how to buy the class if you're interested. Um, so uh, people are always asking me, like, I just you know I just wish I could find my paperwork. Um, and I had one particular client that called me one time, and he was um, literally like crying and he was like I wish I didn't have to spend every Saturday just you know organizing my home or shifting through all of this stuff I could just go to the soccer game I could just spend time with my kids I could just you know I could just not be worried about my bills or the permission slips or whatever it is that I needed to find and he's like will you help me and that really touched my heart because I was like god I can't imagine what that's like right to spend an entire day just shifting clutter around your house and and just wondering what do I do with all this paperwork anyway so so that was an inspiration to make this class um, Marie Kondo the, uh, there is a difference between cleaning and actually organizing and Marie Kondo says that cleaning is confronting nature where organizing is confronting ourselves uh, and I agree I disagree with some of Marie Kondo but I definitely agree with the majority of what she's saying, and this is one of my favorite sayings from her. Uh, so a little bit about how I got into paper management, because I get that question a lot. I uh, started organizing Maniacs in 2007, and that was, as some of you know, it was like in the middle of a economic downturn from the real estate market, and I wanted to, you know, I'd worked for a company for, about five years and they went bankrupt. And so I started freelancing my services to real estate agents and subcontractors and some of, you know, and some of their clients. And the majority of the, the work that I did back then was paper related. Right? And I, and I'd been into inside of a couple of my subcontractors office. And when I called and I said, I'm, you know, I'm organizing people for a living. I'm like, I've seen your office. I know you need my help. And so they were like, okay, come on and help me. And so that's basically how Organizing Maniacs got started. The majority of the work that I started off doing was all paper related. And, um, and over the years, I think that I also, you know, I also did a lot of research and sort of figuring out like, okay, how long should people keep certain pieces of paper? And then, you know, my clients would give me their little checklist from their accountants or their lawyers or their estate planners or, you know, whoever they were working with, uh, their financial planners. And they will always be different guidelines. So I was like, isn't there a place that people can just go and find out exactly how long they should keep a piece of paper? And then one time I ventured into the IRS website which was the most frustrating thing I have ever done because the guidelines are like, you can do this if and then, or if and then, or if and then. And so there's like a million exceptions to all the rules and it got really confusing. So I was like, okay, this is why everybody's keeping all of the paperwork they're keeping. Now in full disclosure, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant, um, you know, I'm not a financial planner. Uh, and every client I work has a different situation, a different story. So before you go and start throwing everything away from your office, because, you know, I may have said something that inspired you, make sure that you fully understand what your situation is and don't just be reckless about what you're throwing away, right? I advocate for ruthlessness, but not recklessness. So, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, literally that one client that I, talked about that I worked with this morning. I mean, they had at least five filing cabinets of paperwork and they had literally paperwork everywhere. They had one bedroom that was just filled with boxes and paperwork. And when I asked them like, what are you, what are you keeping this stuff for? And they're like, we have, we have no idea. We just, we just keep it. We just assume that, you know, it's, it's the thing to do. Everybody else is keeping their paperwork. So, you know, analyzing every single piece of paper, is part of the process and unfortunately there's no shortcut to that um, I over the years have I feel like you know I don't like guessing so if somebody has something I tend to ask a lot of questions which is one of the like one of my biggest tips to people when they are working through their paperwork it's like 
really understanding what is that paperwork for and how are you gonna use it? What is the long-term value and who, who is benefiting from that piece of paper? And whenever people are saying like, I don't know, I don't really need that. I don't know what I need it for. Uh, if you can't answer the question, what is the long-term value of the paperwork? What do you need it for? How is it gonna benefit you? It's most likely not something that you need to keep forever. So that was like, you know, that is a, like the very first process that I took that particular couple through and then we started analyzing all of their paperwork. And the filing systems sometimes are a little bit of like, you know, uh, customized, right? I will probably like, likely have files that some of you would never have like, you know, like I probably have an organizing file, right? Because I read cool articles and, you know, I get some good ideas and so I just stick that stuff in there. But the majority of people would not have that. And some people have like fitness and things like that. So it's like un understanding your paperwork is at the core of what we're going to talk about today. So in 1975, Business Week pre predicted that we would be at some point in our lives, which is right about now, um, that we would be living in a paperless office. And that is, that couldn't be further from, from the truth. I see people's office all the time. I print a ton of stuff because I'm a very tactile. I like to read things in paper. Therefore, they pile up in my desk, on my floor. I like my projects on my floor. Um, so at some point on a weekly basis, I have to be like, okay, I'm done with this. I have to throw it away. And if you are one of those super busy people and you don't do that, right, that's how that stuff um, gets piled up. We are also a very mobile society. There's a ton of people that work from home. Uh, sometimes I go to the grocery store at lunchtime and I'm like, doesn't anybody work anymore? And the truth is that, yes, we do, but we just don't work nine to fives anymore, right? There's a lot of people with flexible schedules and therefore we're bringing that work home and before, you know, we're not getting rid of them because we're just like, it's just sitting here for now. So that's combining the problem with the stuff that we already get that's personal. So that is exacerbating the, you know, the problem with paperwork that I see in some of my clients' homes. They have their personal stuff and they have their work stuff and they don't know what to do with either one of them. So all this stuff is piling up. So um, Harris Interactive, re Interactive reports that about 23% of adults say they pay, pay their bills late. And I totally can see how that happens, right? Once again, we, we get the mail, um, we open it, we don't know what to do with it, we don't have a safe place for it. Before you know it, it could end up in any multiple locations in our home, and before you know it, those bills are late. So. Um, I've been guilty of that at times. I estimate that an average American receives about 90,000 pieces of mail in their lifetime. That's a lot of junk. That is a lot of junk in our, in our homes, in our space. And, you know, if we're not getting rid of anything ever, it can really add up to a lot of paperwork. Uh, Judith Koberg and Kathleen Nadeau wrote an amazing book for ADD. Um, for ADD folks, and it's called The ADD Friendly Ways to Organize Your Life. And in that book, they, um, they said that we received more mail in one month than our parents received in a year. And we received more mail in one year than our grandparents received in a lifetime. That's a lot of paper, right? And nobody was ever taught what to do with it, right? Our grandparents kept everything and that was okay because they didn't get the volume of paperwork that we get today. So, uh, so you might be thinking like, wow, I can see why my home is completely overrun with paper. Um, and that is like one of the number one reasons why I see all of my clients with a lot of paperwork. It's like the volume sometimes in itself is just overwhelming. And if you're already a busy person that doesn't have the time to manage your paperwork, um, that can become an issue. Like sometimes I wake up on Monday and before I know it, it's like the next Monday and I'm like, what happened to my week, right? And I don't even have kids. So I don't know how some of you are managing out there. So one of the first, the first big mistake that I'm going to talk about is people don't know, don't know what to do with their paperwork. So they're keeping everything and they're keeping it forever. Well, that is clearly not a good way to manage paperwork. So the very first thing that I want you to think about I'm um, moving forward and even as you go home today and you start reading your mail is like what why are you keeping this piece of paper whatever you get in the mail I want you to think to yourself like why am I 
Why am I keeping this piece of paper? What is the long-term value of it? What am I going to do with it? How is it going to benefit my family or my house or my work or my health or whatever it is? And if you can't answer that question in a good way, it's likely something that you don't need. So, so I worked with, with a client, her name was Mary, and she, she was about to move. And she had 12 filing cabinets of paperwork, which is probably the most paperwork in an organized way that I had ever seen. And she had kept every single bill, well, in, def in her defense, her and her husband had kept every single bill they had since the 1960s. And it was kind of fun to like look through, you know, what her utilities had been, but there was really no reason to keep all of that, right? They have had this, you know, this entire room just filled with filing cabinets, taking a lot of space that they could have used for other things um, just because they didn't know what to do with that. So don't be one of those people, right? You do not, I know, I know what you're probably thinking, like, I don't have bills from the 1960s. I'm better than those people. But you probably have bills for the last couple of years, and that's even long and long, longer than you probably need to keep that stuff. So the solution number one to that mistake is know why you're keeping something, right? Is it, does it go with your taxes? Does it substantiate a tax write-off? Um, or you know, or a refund or something. Does this does the um, does it need to go with your permanent filing system, right? Does it go with your children? Does it go with your house? Does it go with your car? Uh, does it go with your work? Is it related to some person? Does it go with your pets? You know, if you're like a sandwich generation, you're taking care of your parents. Does it go with them? Like, what is the long-term value of that piece of paper? And just try to be really ruthless about what is it that you know, what is it that you're keeping and why you're keeping it. Um, sometimes we think like, oh, you know, I think this thing might be important. Keep asking questions, right? And, I, and there's a mythology out there in the world that says like ask five questions and then you kind of get to the bottom of the root of whatever the, you know, the brainstorming is, right? So if you're thinking like, well, I don't really know what this piece of paper is and I just ask like, who did it come from? Um, who was it addressed to? What is it informing me of? Right, because the majority of the things we received in our homes are what I call FYI, no long-term paper. And basically, and if follow the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of what we received is not long-term valued in our homes. It's just a piece of paper that says like, hey, you owe me a bill, or you owe me money, or you pay the bill, or, you know, uh, you have a loan and this is your payment or this is something that you should submit or you know this is a renewal thing or um or here is a you know an fyi from the school there's a lot of that that comes into our lives that really don't have any long-term value to it is somebody telling you something that they want you to know via paperwork and as soon as you read that thing right they have done their job so you, you know you receive a bill in the mail and then you know you owe the electric bill $50. You say like, hey, thank you, you know, electric company for telling me this information. And then I go and I pay the bill and then that piece of paper is completely worthless immediately to me, right? So I don't, I don't need to keep that paperwork very long. As soon as I pay the bill, I can get rid of. So um, there are a couple of confusing categories that I like to talk about on this stage, is like, and one of them is medical, because I think that a lot of us um, confuse like medical records with, with medical bills, and then we tend to have all of this paperwork that just you know, lingers on forever. So to me, like medical receipts, if I go to see Dr. Brown and you know, at the end of the appointment, they give me a statement that says like, yes, in fact, I wasn't there, this is my copay, of course, they attach two or three receipts to it. That paperwork has no long-term value to me. But if I go to see Dr. Brown and he takes some blood, and then there's a, there are results that come from that, or you know, if I broke my finger and there was some sort of surgery that happened to that, there's some value to that. So I like to distinguish between the two because one set is like really important for my long-term um, you know, record of my body, 
and the other set is completely useless information as soon as I paid that bill, right? So whenever you're thinking about, uh, about paperwork, just think like, is it really long-term to keep it or is it, really, is it really disguised as an FYI piece of paper because it doesn't really have any long-term value to me? Uh, last couple of weeks, I've noticed I've been getting a lot of, uh, you know, those prospectus from my uh, financial company. And basically, they also come disguised as like very important paperwork. There's some terminology on the paper. I had saved one, but yeah, this is, this is actually one of them. Um, and it has some like, you know, it tells you it's like some important information, but basically this is completely useless. Once, because who actually reads these things? There's like a million of tiny little words and letters in there. And there's like a lot of, you know, spreadsheets and tables and whatnot. Nobody reads this, like not even your financial planner probably. <laughs> this is like the organizing articles of the, you know, financial planning world. Uh, there's no need for you to keep that. I just recently worked with a client and she had an entire cabinet drawer full of them. And she's like, oh, I, I think those are important pieces of paper. And I was like, no, they're really not. Once, because as soon as you receive this, whatever the fund is doing is probably not doing that anymore anyways. So it's completely worthless. However, your financial statements that come from your retirement accounts, or if you're making deposits, or if you're a retirement age and you're making withdrawals, all of that paperwork is probably important, right? Because it has, it shows deposits and things for the, for your, for your account. Uh, I would keep those, but these prospectus, not useful at all. So that's part of the 80%. Um, I hope that's making sense for you guys. I don't see any questions. So I assume, assume I'm doing good here. Uh, so mistake number three that I see people making is they have super complicated filing systems and I see people creating, you know, it's not uncommon that everybody has like one single file, whether it's Manila or whether it's a hanging file for every single piece of paper that ever comes into our lives. And if you're laughing cause you're like, Oh my God, that's totally me. Honestly, one day, one day in the very, very, very long past, I used to have those too because I was like, it makes total sense that I would want all my Verizon paperwork to go together with my Verizon or all of my American Express bills to go together with my American Express bills. But then I started thinking like, what is the value of that, right? One, because those two things at some point are completely useless to me and I don't have to keep them forever. Uh, so now am I not only just putting them into the Verizon folder to begin with, which is one step that I have to, it's an action and a step that I have to take, but then when that paperwork is obsolete, I have to go back and retrieve it out of my filing system and throw it out. So it's a two-step process for something I don't really need to begin with. So I want you to go into your filing system at some point in the next day or so, and look at what you have. Just make an assessment of what is it that you're keeping in there, right? I, is your filing system so complicated that that is the reason that's preventing you from filing? Um, I worked with a client one time that had over 250 files. Average person living in an average house with no children, 250 files. And I was like, what in the world are you keeping in all of these files? Well, it turns out that every single thing had its own category and its own filing system. And of course, there's paperwork everywhere because honestly, if I had to file a single piece of paper into a single file every single time I needed to do something, I would never file anything away, which is exactly what had happened to her. It was just so complicated and it took so much time and every single piece needed to go individually that she eventually quit filing. So, so you could simplify where you currently have, commingle some categories, right? I, I like to commingle things like, um, I like to commingle things like utilities, right? I like to commingle things like credit cards. I like to sometimes commingle all the things that I no longer want or need or use on a monthly basis into just one file whatever you feel comfortable with, 
but just go into your filing system and consider eliminating some of the files that you're having. Um, one huge category that I normally see people have is like around health and recipes and wellness and exercise and, um, and physical therapy and anything that's like body, health, mind related, right? Can those be combined in just one super fat file? And if you needed something, you can just go over there and retrieve that, which we're likely never going in there to retrieve anything, right? It just make us feel good that we're keeping it instead of having to file into like at least six different categories. So make an assessment of what you have in your own filing cabinet and are there some categories that you could combine and eliminate. That will take away some of the work that you are doing that may also making you think like, oh my God, you know, I have to file all these things and it takes six different files, uh, but now it only takes one. So your brain may get more excited and say like, oh, I can file. It only takes one file. I can do this. Okay. An average family, I think, should really be able to keep their filing system to like a couple of drawers, maybe three drawers, three filing drawers at the very most, right? It's like, it's like one file for like all of your temporary stuff. And once again, that's 80% of the mail that you receive that you're like, eh, I'm gonna keep this just for now because I'm still waiting for my pants to be delivered or I bought pants and I don't know if I'm gonna keep them or not. Uh, or my electric bill was due, I paid for it, but I like to remember what I, when I paid it, so I like to have the receipt, or you know, I paid my credit card, and I, I like to you know, keep those receipts, I, mean, I like to keep those statements for a little while, because you know, next month I wanna see what my, uh, I don't know, how much money I spend in dinner. So those are just like, all of the temporary paperwork that you should be keeping should be in one file, and if you like to keep them separate, good for you. I like to simplify them as much as possible and then just like, you know, create a, a, a temporary filing system. Normally I advocate for like a monthly filing system, right? So it goes from like January through December. Um, we're in February. All of the pieces of paper that I received in February that I think like this is completely useless to me. I just stick it in my February file and then I'm good to go. So it's kind of organized. If I need it, I know where to find it. Otherwise, it's not a pile on my desk. However, at some point by next year, I can purge that and get rid of it. And, and those pieces of paper are basically totally useless. Right? There's never a time when I go into my monthly file and I say like, well, here's something I really wish I had kept. It's a lot of things that I can, I can throw away. So if you have more than like three or four drawers of filing paper in your home, you probably have a filing system that is too complicated. Okay, so one thing that I see a lot that, um, that contribute to the complication of filing systems is not having good naming convention. A naming convention is just a fancy name is it just a, fa a fancy way of like saying, what are you, what are you labeling your, your files, right? Um, I worked with a client, um, she had five different files just for her car. And one of them was named like DMV, and one was named car, and then she drove a Jetta, one was named Jetta, and then the other one was Volkswagen, and you know, and the other one was just like miscellaneous car stuff. So they were all in different places because she kind of had an alphabetical filing system, Right, so now they're all in different locations. Whenever she's thinking about it, she can't remember what the file is, so she just makes another one. So be very diligent as you also, you know, examining what you have in your filing system, how are you labeling things, right? Because it's like, you should go with how your brain thinks. I see a lot of people uh, creating filing systems for things and they're being fancy, right? I normally would never use the word vehicle, ever. <laughs> Not something I ever say. So if I created a filing system and my file said vehicle, I would never look for anything car related in that because that is not a terminology that is natural to my brain. My brain would think like, oh, Ford, 
because I drive a Ford. So my brain would always automatically think Ford, that's where the car stuff is. Even if I created a file that said car, I still probably would never look for that because my brain is always thinking, I drive a Ford and that's what I'm gonna go look for. So as you're examining this filing system and as you're creating new files for it, just how is it that your brain defaults? Like what is it that you're thinking when you're looking at the piece of paper? What is it coming up to you? And how, did, how does it trigger your brain to remember that thing? That's extremely important because that is the word that you should be using. I, I love Judith Koberg and she wrote a couple of like really good books about organizing and chronic disorganization. In one of her books, which I think is called Conquering Chronic Disorganization, she talks about like, don't be shy with the amount of words that you would use when creating a filing system, right? So if this is a piece of paper that would keep you out of jail and that's how you would remember, create a file that says paperwork that will keep me out of jail. That way when you need the paperwork because you're about to go to jail, you know exactly where the file is and you can know exactly where to go to get it. So, um, so solutions to your mistake number two is just eliminate all of the non-essential files, right? So if you were creeping a Verizon, a Comcast, a water bill, an electric bill, like can you eliminate all of those files, put them together into one and just call them utilities, right? Can you simplify the filing so your brain is more apt to, um, you know, cooperate with you when you wanna file and eliminate as, mon as many as you can. Uh, be very diligent on naming convention, right? Just go with the grain, go with what your brain will think about whatever that word is. If you're not using words like vehicle, don't put that in your filing system. Can you combine things that you also have that are like broader categories, right? Like your exercise, your self-care, your health, your meditation, spa. I want you to like think like, what can I commingle in my filing system and how can I make that work for me? Uh, that should eliminate at least 25 to 30% of the files you have in your filing cabinet. So the mistake number three that I see people making is they have filing systems that are not easily accessible. And sometimes I say that when I'm teaching classes and people are like, well, I have my filing system on the third floor, you know, back room closet, kind of behind, you know, all of the stuff that I use. And I'm like, when are you ever going to go file in there? And people are like, well, I don't. That's why the paperwork is all over the place. So my tip for you is like, if you read your mail in the kitchen, your filing system for the majority of your 80% paper should also be in the kitchen. I know people say that to me all the time. They're like, what are you crazy? I have a small space where I don't have any room or, um, or I wouldn't know where to put it. Uh, it's not uncommon that I sacrifice kitchen space for clients filing systems. And, and I think that is like, sometimes that's all it takes. It's like finding a good place to put your paperwork. And it's not uncommon also that I will create free flowing filing bins for people, you know, just get one of those plastic crates from, you know, one of the big, big box store, create a filing system that you can have that sits on the counter. If that's where you read your mail. And then when your friends come over, you can put the lid on it and shove that in the closet, right? But when you're ready to file again, you can easily pull it out and it's available. That way you're, you know, you're using the filing system. It's, it's serving you. And whenever you, you know, whenever you're going to entertain, you can put that thing away instead of like, all of the piles everywhere because you can never get to your filing system. So <laughs> I recently worked with a client and she had this beautiful filing cabinet, but you know, she had just like cluttered the top and then the, the, the pile had fallen and then there was another thing in front of it. And then before you know it, she couldn't get to it. And like, it was literally covered all the way around with paperwork. <laughs> and I was like, isn't it a little ironic how like your filing cabinet is literally covered with paper in front on top and everywhere. She's like, yeah, I just feel so bad. I can't get to it. And all of it happened because she had put something in front of it that was like, you know, it was like another box of things that needed to be unpacked that she didn't get around to it. And before you knew it, that became the obstruction of the filing 
and then the paperwork got out of you know got out of sorts so if you find yourself like having a difficult time filing um i would also ask that question first of all do you have a filing system to begin with right because sometimes i work with people and they were like, well, I have a hard time filing. And I say, where's your filing system? And they're like, I don't have one. Well, that is your first problem. And then two, is it accessible? Can you get to it? And if it's not, can you move it somewhere where then you can have access to it easier than if it was just on the, you know, the third floor, third closet behind the, you know, scary uh, stuffed animal or whatever it is that you're keeping up there. Um, that's not helping you file, right? Those are just some legitimate questions that you can answer immediately today that may help you in improve on your filing system. So, and, and, and this is, you know, this is sometimes the reason why people call me and I go to their homes and I'm like, uh, I remember one, one time that I worked with Pam, I went over there and she's like, her house is like pretty organized. And I'm thinking like, why are you calling me? Like, there's no clutter anywhere. And she just literally had like a, you know, she had like a huge pile on her kitchen counter. And then I'm like trying to analyze where her filing system is, where, um, why is it not working for her? And so we just moved it into the kitchen and that just solved the problem for her. And I still see Pam and she's like my client from this morning. You know, I go over there maybe once a year kind of, you know, refinesce the system, make sure that everything is working as it needs to. She does a really good job in maintaining her filing system now just because it's super easy for her. It's in a place where she can touch it every single day when she, when she gets the mail or, you know, once a week, whenever. I don't know how often she reads the mail. I read my mail every day. But it's easy enough to touch it if she wanted to read her mail every day. And it's very easy to file, which makes it super easy not to leave piles everywhere. So, so find a good location in your home. And once again, I hear from people all the time, they're like, I cannot give a space in my kitchen. That's fine. You know, is there some room in your coat closet? Is there a piece of furniture that you can put a filing system is? Um, uh, could you put it on a shelf somewhere, right? I want you to explore the options around you there, like near where you are reading your mail. And where could a filing system go? It doesn't have to be plastic. It doesn't have to be ugly. There are lots of options there. I mean, like, you know, we can go to the container store and there's a million different options there, but there are a lot of other options online too. So if you don't like ugly, if you don't want it, you know, if you don't want it to be plasticky, there are lots of options for you, but I like plastic. I like kitchen cabinets. I like it simple. I like not to put the lid on. So I just want to open the door. I want to see where the filing system is. I want to stick the paperwork and I want to be done under three seconds because I'm, I'm going to be much more likely to file that paperwork away if it is super easy for me and you will be too. So I'm going to drink some more. So the steps that I basically take people through when creating a filing system is, um, is, is the filing systems are basically three parts to me as I see it, right? One is your permanent filing system. Those are all the things that are, it's your family, it's your home, it's your car, it's your children, it's your pets, your parents. Those are the things that are like pretty much permanent and constant in your life. And then there's all the, there's the 80% FYI paperwork that we receive on a daily basis. And that really has no long term, term value to, to any of us besides that, you know, you owe, you pay, that's good to go. And then there are taxes, which is pretty much, you know, a, a thing that we have to keep. Um, I normally recommend people to keep their taxes for about seven years because I feel like that covers a lot of the nuances of the tax code. If you're like, if you're doing this and if you're doing that, there are a lot of like little exceptions. However, you may be a person that feels like my income and my expenses and my write-offs are super simple. Uh, I don't really need to keep that long. So I think four years would be good enough and you can do that. Um, but, you know, just that stuff can go on the third, you know, third floor closet behind, you know, the stuffed animals and the creepy, you know, dresses that you have from when you were in the <laughs> weddings in the 1980s. Um, 
because you don't really need that unless you get audited. So it can go somewhere really obscure in your house that you never have to look at it again. And then you just go there once a year when you're like putting a new pile and you're pulling a new, a new pile out. So um, systems, if I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but systems need to be super easy for your brain, right? Because at any given time, when I'm challenged to do something, the first thing my brain thinks is like, mm, how much time is that going to consume? And if I say, well, it's only going to take a couple of seconds, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to go use the system. If I'm like, mm, it's going to take me like five or six steps and it's going to take me 15 minutes, my brain's like, eh, I don't feel like it right now. I'll just do it later. And we all know what happened to like, I'll do it later, right? It never happens because life gets in the way and other things come up. And before we know it, it's all, you know, it's all not happening. So make it super simple for your brain to remember where things go. And it also will make, it'll be super simple for you to maintain, right? Um, I have taught this class before and then somebody called me and she was like, well, you know, I didn't really follow the program <laughs> and I created this filing system that was like complicated and now I don't want to file. And then I said, well, go back to step one, right? Cause I'm like, you can go and revamp the system that you currently have, which is fine, but you have to think about like, what is the maintenance of that going to be like? Because ultimately, the reason why the majority of the systems that I see people uh, create fail is not because the system itself may be terrible. It's the maintenance part of it that's terrible because just keep it in mind, if it takes too many steps, you're not going to do it. So... So in the, in the program, in the class, I basically take people to kind of how to create good goals, right? Because I feel like sometimes, you know, we forget. You may not, but um, we talk about creating time blocks. Um, you know, I was honest, an average office for us takes about 16, 16 hours, or about four appointments to get organized. If you already have a filing system, depending on how much paperwork you have, it's gonna take you some, some time to, it's gonna take you some time to create a current filing system that you can start implementing right away. And it is gonna take you time to go sort the stuff in the, you know, in the filing cabinets that you currently have. So you have to plan for that. And time blocking is a way that can help you. You actually put it on your calendar, you make deliberate effort to go and, you know, sort through that stuff. You don't just save it for like nights and weekends because that'll probably never happen. Um, give you some suggestions on products. I'm, I'm I mean, like, when we work with people, we don't tend to be go super fancy. I mean, like, I am not a fan of manila folders. I hardly ever use them when I'm working with clients. I like hanging folders. I like big tabs. I like big words. I like easy to read. Um, I like, you know, commingled. I like super plain and boring. Right? But it makes sense to my brain. It's super easy to do. And then, you know, much more likely to implement it and get stuff done. So we, in the class, I give you a whole entire shopping list of what you would need and how you, you know, what you would get and how you would set up that system. So you are not, you know, you are always welcome to use the stuff that you already have, but you don't have to go buy a whole bunch of stuff. It's very streamlined. Um, I always ask people if they have a filing cabinet. And if you don't, probably going to need one of those. Uh, and then we talk about the sorting process, which is, you know, I always tell people like start from today. Like if you go home today and you just create, how am I going to manage my, you know, my temporary paperwork. And then I start with today's mail. At some point you may have time to go back. And if you don't, sometimes that stuff ages itself out. So start with today, don't be a perfectionist, just start managing the paperwork that's coming in the mail today. And that way you can move forward in a positive way with less paper. And then at some point you can go back into the past if you have time and if you don't, then you can just, you know, at some point just get rid of that stuff. Whenever I'm working with people, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to pick first. I like to pick the oldest stuff first because that's most likely the stuff that you don't that you don't need anymore. It's a lot easier to make decisions, so you can you know you can start moving through the paperwork pretty fast. 
I believe in small wins. And in that case, it's a big win, right? If you start sorting through paperwork and you're like, oh, I don't need this, I don't need that, I don't need this. And you just start getting rid of stuff. You're gonna feel good about it. You're gonna make progress. And then you're probably gonna be like, okay, I can do this again. If you start with some more recent piles, you may be like, oh, I still need this. I don't know what to do with this. I need to show this to you know my husband or my wife or I need to ask my accountant about this. And if you start like, you know, you're not making any progress with that pile, your brain's gonna be like, well, this is not really working, is it? So let's not do this project ever again. And then you're like gonna go off to, you know, watch some Netflix or something. Which is what I wanna do when I'm thinking about filing. <laughs> I wanna go watch some Netflix. So start with the older paperwork. If you're gonna sort through the paperwork that you have, and then if you're gonna create a new filing system because you don't have enough time, just start today, start fresh with today's mail and then move your way forward in a positive way. So uh, I advocate for ruthlessness and not recklessness. And sometimes I work with people and they're like, oh, that pile over there is really, is really not important. I know what's in there, just throw it all away. And then I'll be flipping through it and invariably I'll find something important like their passport or their birth certificate or, you know, love letters from family members that they were like, oh my God, that was like the last letter my dad wrote me. Uh, so you don't want to be throwing that away. So I advocate for actually evaluating every piece of paper before you throw stuff away. It also doesn't let you wonder, right? If you're, if you're like, oh my God, where's my birth certificate? And you started just throwing piles randomly away. You're not going to be like, oh my God, was that in one of the piles? Because you're going to have looked through every single piece of paper. You have made an educated decision about what you're getting rid of. And you're actually getting rid of what you don't need and not recklessly throwing anything away. So make good choices. Evaluate every piece of paper. Do you need it? How are you going to use it? How is it important in the future? Does it have any long-term value to you or your family? Right? If you are keeping it just in case, then it can go into your, your temporary filing system because just in case is not important. It's just short term to you today. So um, I hear from people about this all the time to this, like it's exhausting to make that many decisions. Yes, it is. And I wish I had a magic wand that could make that better for all of us, but I don't. So work in smaller piles, right? Maybe like, maybe like while you're, I don't know, watching TV, maybe you commit to a small pile to just say, okay, before I start watching Game of Thrones again, uh, I'm going to go through this tiny little pile and I'm going to get rid of some of these paperwork. And you are going to end up with some of it that are, you know, important, that needs filing systems, that need whatever. And you can create that in a, you know, you can put that in a safe place. Maybe you can create a box that says to be filed, right, or important or whatever. So that way you at least know that those pieces of paper are important. They need to go somewhere at some point. But right now you're just still sorting and trying to figure out what's happening over there. Um, commingling is the thing I advocate the most, right? Everybody gets afraid of commingling. I don't know why. Uh, everybody always say it's probably the number one thing I hear people say is like, Oh my God, my file's going to be too fat. Yes, it will. However, if you're looking for an article about exercise and your file is like an inch thick, you are likely going to file. Yes. It's going to take you maybe three minutes to go through the file and figure out what's in your exercise file. However, you know, it's in there because you only have one file, right? But if you have exercise and physical therapy and leisure and stretching and yoga, it's gonna take you a lot more time to go through all of these files to find what you're looking for. So commingling is your friend. I know it's afraid, it's scary in the first, you know, when you first start thinking about putting things together and how do they belong and, and am I gonna find my paperwork? But trust me, eventually it's so much better for your filing system. So, because the question really is like, which one would you like? Would you like to file 20 pieces of paper and three files? Or would you like to file 20 pieces of paper and 20 files? I hope you answer number one. So um, we also go through an extensive 
Um, there's like a whole hour and a half video just on record retention, which means understanding how long to keep paperwork, right? And I and I wish I could, I wish I could like you know easily transfer that information to people too, but I can't. You just have to understand your paperwork. You have to understand what you're keeping. You have to understand how it's relevant to your family. So I go through the whole process of understanding that. If you're a homeowner, you probably have to keep more paperwork. If you have a business, you have to keep more paperwork. And it's just understanding what is your relationship to your paperwork. And we extensively talk about that uh, in, in, in that class, which I think in, in the essence, this is the reason why people come and work with us, right? It's because we help them through that understanding of why are they keeping this paperwork. You can create little pretty bit, you know, files for yourself and, um, which I see all the time. I mean, like not everybody's filing system is ugly. <laughs> There's some really beautiful filing systems out there, but it's, it's because we don't understand what's going in there and it doesn't matter what the outside look, look, looks like. Uh, if I don't understand my filing system, I'm likely only, only solving a very short term problem. The long term problem of not understanding what it is will still be there and then piles are going to get created again. So um, whenever I talk about record retention, I also like to remind people that, you know, once again, everybody's situation is different. So if you have, you know, legal matters or a medical history, or if you've been audited, your guidelines are going to be a little bit different. So keep that in mind when you're going through your filing system and deciding what you're going to get rid of, what you're going to keep. Uh, okay. So... I also talk about uh, non-paperwork stuff because it seems to be the thing that always end up, ends up in our office. So we talk about manuals, what to do with all of that. Um, there's all the electronic clutter that we have, which is just getting worse because every time you buy something, they give you more quartz that you don't need. Um, there's all of the kids stuff that ends up in our office. What do you do with, with that long term? There are accessories, there are all kinds of things. We address a lot of that in the class as well. And then, which is normally counterintuitive, then we talk about actual filing, right? Because I think it's like, I think it's like as you go through the history of what you have, why are you keeping it, how are you keeping it, um, what's the importance of it, then now it makes sense to actually create a filing system to store the stuff that you're actually going to um that you're actually going to have and it's the exact same process in organizing if you've ever been organized by a professional organizer before with anybody on my team or with me is like we pull all of your stuff out of the closet we evaluate what you have you make decisions about what to keep what to get rid of and then we end up with a pile of things to keep and then we go back and organize that stuff because that's what we establish is relevant to the filing system so we go through that um and you can't have anything without maintenance right because it's like i can give people the most beautiful filing systems if they don't understand why they're keeping that paperwork guess what they're not going to understand how to file and then the piles are going to come back so uh and it requires maintenance like um you know on a monthly basis you probably have to purge something and in a yearly basis, you probably want to convert some stuff out, like your taxes and whatnot. So there's always maintenance, like filing systems are not static. They are meant to be kind of like a live breathing thing that needs some refinessing a little, a little bit regularly. So that way you, you don't end up with filing systems from the 1960s. So um, skipping all of that. So, um, so Basically, I've gone over a, a lot of stuff. It's four o'clock, talked a lot. Um, I've given you some great ideas and you can, you, know, you can go ahead and probably leave right now and just implement some of the stuff on your own. However, you know, a lot of the times I hear from people and they're like, I don't wanna do this by myself or I don't really know what to do or I still need more uh, assistance. And he, so here's the part where I'm gonna talk about the class. Um, Keeping all of that. So the program that we have, which is completely online, uh, it's like all of the modules are available. You go online in your own spare time and you can watch the videos. Sorry, I like itchy face. Um, you can watch the videos and 
Uh, you can do it at your own pace. So if you like watching things in the middle of the night, you can do it that way. Um, all of it is available and ready to go. There are four videos and, uh, and on a monthly basis, I am going to start hosting a Q&A call. So it'll be the last Thursday of the month. So there is a call scheduled for next week. And I'm gonna answer any of your questions. There's a lot of questions that I have answered in a couple of the videos that I recorded. But if you have something that's unique to you and you don't know what to do with it, you can come to the call where you can send your questions. I'm gonna answer your questions and then you're gonna get um, real live answers for that. Uh, there's also a Facebook group where people can you know, ask questions and share lessons learned with the other people that's taken the class. It is not an outrageously active group, but there are over a hundred people that have taken this class. So there is um, some people in there kind of lurking and learning. Uh, so like I said, the class covers goal settings, products, how to sort, majority of record retention, how to manage non-paperwork items, the actual creating of the filing system and maintenance. And let me skip all of that. Some more of that. Um, in the sorting process, we talk about you know how to create a document tree. Uh, we're going to extensively talk about naming convention, which I think is one of the biggest reasons why people have really bad filing systems. Um, talk a little bit of reckless, not ruthless, ruthless, not reckless. Uh, I'm gonna you can actually see how I created the filing system which I think is super helpful because you have a visual of what it looks like um, and then I have a few videos of like how to manage you know your manuals your cords your kids projects and things like that so an average office probably costs people around $2,500 to get organized so I'm gonna sell this program to you today for $398 and um, I'm going to give you all of the recorded classes that are already there. So there's a ton of bonus things there. Like there are tabs that I have created. They're ready to be printed. There are some um, task management lists. There's a whole bunch of, there's some bonus modules that I created about around um, a couple of my favorite books that um, are around habits. Um, there are some time management tools, like how to effectively time block. It's like if you think you might be ADD, there's a little bit about like brain-based challenges in there and how does that impact your organizing. So I try to like add a whole bunch of stuff that I thought was really helpful for people to have that would make them more organized. So um, so if you're interested in the class, you can go to Organizing Maniacs slash Detox for file box. And then there's a link there. Oh, excuse me. To go purchase the class. Um, if for some reason you decide like, I didn't learn anything that was useful and I like my money back, I'm totally cool with that because I don't like take people's monies when they don't learn something. Um, that is really the cheapest things we sell and it's like less than one appointment with me at people's offices. So I'm giving you a ton of stuff for just a small amount of uh, your money. Um, I hear from people like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resources. I feel like this is not going to work for me. And I worked with a client a few years ago. I should say more like eight, eight, nine years ago. And I went over there, she has ADD. And I went over there and I gave her this filing system. And then I left and about two weeks later, she was like, I don't really like it. It doesn't really work for me. And I said, did you actually use it? She was like, no, I didn't use it. And I was like, well, you give it a try and just you know, work at it differently than you would have. And she was like, fine, I will try. Well, now she's one of my biggest advocates for that filing system, right? Once you learn how to use it, and once you make it part of your active life, and when you start asking, those questions kind of come naturally to your brain. Like, you know, how am I going to use this? What is it good for? You know, does it have any long-term value? It becomes part of you, the, the way your brain thinks. 
keep paperwork forever because now you know the questions you need to ask of yourself uh, about your paperwork, which will help you diminish the piles. And your filing system will be super easy to use because you have commingled a lot. You have streamlined all of the things that you have. So the combination of these two things alone will significantly reduce the piles um, around your home. And once again, you know, if you were, I think I'm gonna, uh, if you decide that you didn't learn anything that was useful, I'll be glad to give you your money back. So I don't really see, I don't see any questions. I must have done a really good job. Um, I'm gonna hang out for a few minutes to see if, if you have anything you wanna ask me that is specific. Oh, there's some questions. Okay, so Cindy says she's uh, what she's what she's doing that's really working for her is she's been using translucent folders and putting them inside of hanging files. I like that idea. I like that actually better than Manila folders because I think Manila folders they stick up, and then depending how many files you have, it gets really cluttered. It's really hard for my brain to focus on what it is I'm looking for. Sometimes I see people like chicken scratching their words on it. Um, so putting them in something that's a little bit more contained, um, I think that's helpful. I also think that um, that helps if you don't feel comfortable commingling things, right? Sometimes I work with clients and they may have like medical things or they may have like surgeries or they may have reasons why they want to keep things kind of separate. That is a great way to do that. So if you had knee surgery in 1995, you can label that and you can put it inside or if you had... You know, if you broke your hand and you had surgery, you can put that into the, you know. So if you want to create a little bit of like separation inside of your hanging files, that is a great way to do that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Cindy. And thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Click that. So I don't see any other questions or comments. Um, if you, I know I still see like 10 people uh, hanging out on the call. So if you, if you have a takeaway that you like to share, because I love accountability, you're welcome to share that. What is the one thing that you're going to go and implement uh, from your filing system today or in the next couple of days that you'd like to share? share that would be cool. What is a documentary? A documentary is basically the way your filing system works. So um, a documentary for me would be like, I'm Chris, and then I have like a professional file, I have a medical file, I have an education file, so that would be a documentary. It would start with like, you know, what's at the root, so that would be like a person or a house or a car, and then all of the little branches that go with it. So those will be all of the files that are related to it. And the filing systems I create for people, instead of creating them from A through Z, I create them more around like things or people. So all of your house files would basically go together. All of your, you know, all of the Chris's file would go together. All of my, you know, dog's file would go together. So that way when I'm also thinking like, who is this piece of paper for? I'm thinking of blocks of things, right? So here's all my, so this belongs to my house. So I know I go to my house section or this belongs to Chris that goes into Chris's section. Does that make sense? Uh, do you use tabs on the hanging files or what would you recommend to label? Yes. Thank, thanks for asking that question, Jenny. Um, I use tabs and I like the one third cut tabs. So they tend to be like, they're about this big. Um, and the one fifth, they're like really small. I really dislike those. So whenever I buy filing system, they already come in one thirds. And that means it's like one third of the size of the hanging file. It gives you plenty of, space to write whatever it is that you're the word that you're using um i also like a label maker you know costco has one for like under 30 dollars and honestly just the price of the label tape alone pays for the label maker uh so it's super you know super easy to use and and it makes your labels uniform and it's very easy if you don't want to spend the money on a label maker uh, Avery makes these really cool tabs. Like if you bought my class, I give you all the prepaid 
uh, all of the pre-printed tabs, all you have to do is insert the labels in and then they just print and then they have a very unique look. I, I find that keeping a unique look on the tabs makes it also visually easy to see. Once again, if you like kitchen chicken scratching and you're like, what does that say? Your brain is more likely to be like, let's just create a new file. So uh, big, big tabs is really useful doing that. Okay, so I answer that. Okay, let's see. Oh, Betty said, this is inspiring, and I'm grateful that I did the, that I did this webinar. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's great to see you. It's always nice to catch up with people I haven't seen in a long time. So I think I answered that. I, I got that love. Let's see what else we got here. I think I answered that. Okie dokie. So I don't have any more questions. If you're like still thinking I have a question, ask now or forever hold your peace. So if you're interested in the class, you can go to organizingmaniacs.com slash detox your file box. It is on sale for $3.98. That is going to last until Saturday the 2nd at like 11.59 p.m. So um, thank you, Cindy. Thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate you letting me share my gift of organization with you today. And I hope you have an amazing day. So always grateful. Thank you. Bye.